Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video, we're going to be going over all of the spare parts and tools I use for the motorized bikes. But first, let's go ride the bike. All right, we're taking a bit of a gamble with this trip because this chain was nuked at the race event when I tried to ride around the pond and caught a stick. Made the chain jump off and then get bound up in the sprocket and it got folded up in the engine and it bent the chain, it broke a link. So uh, I just kind of babied it together. I have a 41 roller chain. I'm gonna try and see if it fits on there. All right, let's get at it. No fender and a lot of mud. I guess we're getting dirty. I'm still running the retarded timing. I put a lock washer on the magnet to hopefully keep it from moving around. Uh, the low end and the high end still runs great. Mid RPMs uh, still a bit iffy. Flicking everything in my face. <laughs> I did not think this through. Not at all. Woo! Yeah, a little bit. This is a Glock 20, shoot to 10 millimeter. These are uh, my own reloads, but unfortunately, I use the wrong weight bullet, so they like to keyhole when they come out of the barrel. Instead of unloading them, which would take forever, I'm just going to shoot them at close range. Switch you guys up to linear view so you can, uh, I don't know, maybe see it a little bit better. There we go. They're going a little low, I think. A little to the left. I ain't shot in a while, I'm pretty rusty. 
We'll get him. A little better. Oh, there's a nick. I'm gonna count that. That's a small target. It's like trying to shoot a hand. All right, well, not great, not terrible. Well, I really hope that chain doesn't give us problems because it wasn't until I got all the way here that I realized I don't have my wallet or my phone. <laughs> Correct. It's a bit of a long walk back if we break down, so let's hope for the best. Anyways, back to Superview and a muddy road. Yay. We're going to continue to ride this bike during the winter. but it does seem to enjoy this weather. The cooler weather is, I don't know, the bikes just like it. But if you can get them going. <laughs> purpose of this video is to show you the spare parts that I keep because it might give you an idea of what you can expect to have lying around if you plan on getting serious with motorized bikes, as well as some of the specialized tools which you may be using to work on these bikes. And at the very least, you'll be able to see some of the parts in this video and say, oh yeah, I need to pick up some of those because I'm almost out or mine's about to break. Because, well, they're motorized bikes and pretty much everything's about to break. You guys know that I use Dremels on a lot of my bikes for a lot of little random things. Here I just have a basic single speed Dremel. This is for heavy work if I want to do cylinder porting or just grind away a bit of metal from a frame or whatever. Now if I want to do some more precision work or I just don't want to make as much noise, I'll use this smaller Dremel. This is a precision Dremel. Very quiet. Uses a small adapter. It's lightweight. End up using a lot of sanding bits. Cutoff wheels are probably the number one tool that I use with these Dremels. And then various different grinding stones and cutting bits. If you do plan on doing Dremel work, highly recommend getting a mask. Cheap little mask. Everybody's got them nowadays thanks to the stupid pandemic. So if you have a spare mask that you're just going to throw away anyways, throw it in a box with your Dremel. Other various tools like drills and things, just scatter them around with your tools so you always have one available. 
Now in this toolbox, I pretty much have anything that is specifically designed for working on a bike or a motor for a bike. If you build enough of these motors, inevitably you'll end up with a plethora of these gear pullers. And these are always good to have around. Freewheel sockets. Spark plug tools for various different sizes. A spark plug gapper, just a cheap one, but these do make a difference. If you haven't gapped your plug yet, try it. You might be surprised on what you get. Spoke truing tools. A degree wheel, which I have yet to use, but I do plan on using this on my next standard PK80. This is a super cheap, super heavy chain breaker for 415, 410 chains, and I think this will work on the number 41 roller which I'll be putting on a bike here pretty soon. I always forget what they call these. A spanner or something. Uh, it's for um, working on the lock ring with the crank set. Various different low profile wrenches. These come in handy when you're adjusting wheel bearings, cup and cone bearings. At some point you're gonna have to pull a crank off a bike and that's what this is for, the crank puller. Uh, this is for, I think the bottom brackets on specific bikes. I've yet to use this for anything because all my bikes are cheap and they don't have the kind of bottom brackets which utilize this, but I have it for when I get a good bike. This is a chain cleaner. It's what I use for the 415, 410 chains. Cleans them really easy. This, for way too many reasons to list in the video, is probably the best investment I've made for working on motorized bikes so far. This is just a generic $50 bike work stand that I got off of Amazon and it's been holding up to the heavy bikes just fine. When you're true in the rear sprocket, working on a tire, just basically anything that you can't use a kickstand to work on, these are just a lifesaver. Probably the tub that sees the most traffic is my random parts and hardware tub. Random bits of hoses, mounting brackets, nuts, bolts, washers, screws. I think hose clamps are in here as well. Yeah. So it's random hardware. Um, everybody has a random hardware tub. It just depends on how big yours is. Chains, pulleys, tensioners, sprockets, and anything that could be related to those particular items. New pulleys for the old style tensioners and the spring tensioners. The 41 roller chain, which I haven't tested yet. Oh yeah. Okay, that's the 41 roller chain. Now, it does seem to be a bit wider than the generic chain, but people say they're tougher and they just stand up really well to the abuse of the motors. So we got sprockets, a failed attempt at using a clamp-on adapter, 415 heavy-duty chain, bearings, clutch parts, brake parts, wood drift keys. Pretty self-explanatory. We used this box in the last video. Cable sleeves, cable end caps, barrel adjusters, Fresh axles, probably a good idea for you guys to keep a spare rear axle on hand. I haven't had issues breaking axles, but I have had issues stripping the threads. Generally, torque these down a little harder than you should, or at least I do, to keep the rear wheel from moving under the hammering load of the motor. Crankcase and clutch bearings, they're the same bearing, just the crankcase. You remove one of the seals or shields on the inside. Brake cables for the brake parts, a spare dual brake lever. We got clutch pads in there, another clutch assembly. I have two of them apparently, I did not know that. Bucking bars, bucking bar bearings, clutch arms, clutch cams. Spark plugs, mags, CDIs, gaskets. Basic Felpro gasket material. It's resistant to water, oil, and fuel. It's what I use for my intake gaskets, my crankcase gaskets, base gaskets. It's about a millimeter thick. Lots of extra spark plugs, uh, exhaust manifold gaskets, use spark plugs, brass head gaskets, main seals or oil seals for the crankcase, two spare magnetos, one new one used, both good, extra CDI, carbs, intakes, filters, cables, jets, throttle, cables gotta be throttle cables, uh, aftermarket aluminum house throttle assembly with kill switch. A filter I thought would fit on the stock carburetors. Uh, another filter which still does not fit. You guys already see my Boxo carburetors. I have every jet size that I know you can get for the stock NT carburetors. 
This is a 20 millimeter carburetor. And if I can figure out a way to create an intake manifold, which will mount this to a standard PK80, I'm gonna try and use it. Jet cleaners, those came with one of my jet kits. Never used them, I probably will. Tubes, liners, brake pads. Oh yeah, so inner tubes, right? So liner, rim tape, spare brake pads, cylinders, pistons, heads, case parts. Okay, so I got spare studs, random covers, extra head, I suppose this one's still good. Uh, a high hole and a low hole spare piston. This is my iron sleeved PK80 cylinder. I think it's a, a what the G4. It's got the it's got the bridge in the exhaust and it's got the bridge in the transfers. This is the cylinder I took off my YD100. I assumed it was going to be bad. It's got a little bit of chipping in the lining, but we ran it hard and it never got worse. So spare crank connecting rod. So I use these bikes as a mode of transportation and going to work almost every day. And I run the YouTube channel, which means that I'm probably going to have more parts and tools than a lot of people watching this video. But you don't need all that stuff. If you just want to have fun in this hobby, just grab what you need when you need it and you'll be good to go. Eventually you'll stockpile everything you need. A lot of you guys are going to have less than me, but some of you are going to have more than me. So if you saw something missing in that closet that you know I should have, let me know in the comments. Even if it's not useful to me, it might be useful to somebody else watching the video. Anyways, if you got some random useful information out of this video or you saw something in that closet that made you say, oh yeah, I need to get some of those because I'm almost out or mine is broken, <laughs> leave a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, ride safe.